Let's say you're giving advice to the parents and grandparents in the room. You can't reshape the system, you can't even control Harvard, but you can tell them what to do for their children. Mm -hmm. What's your advice, given all of what you just said? Uh, well, you should delay specialization and okay. as long as possible. Uh, you should, uh, uh, because of all of those, yeah, for, because prediction is poor and burnout. Burnout is another, is as big an issue as poor prediction, early prediction. Um, uh, and I would avoid, um, I think the other parallel problem, which I get at in David and Goliath, is I think that um, overly competitive environments uh, at too early an age are really deeply problematic. So I thought about this the other day when I was, I, I, um, I live most of the time upstate New York, very close to Bard. And I go and I work out at the Bard gym and I was watching. So Bard has got, I don't know how many students. I mean, is, is it 2,000? I don't even know, it's some Small. tiny number. And I was watching the Bard lacrosse team work out. And I don't know anyone, I don't want to offend anyone who went to Bard. <laughs> They're not allowed to say, by the way, they okay. did. That's right, they can't say. They can't say. They're terrible. The, I was just, you know, eyeballing their lacrosse team. And I was like, good Lord. I mean, I, off, I felt that I could go down there at 52 and make this team. And then that was my first thought. And my second thought was, that is so fantastic. Because what it means is you can be an ordinary Joe at Bard and play lacrosse, right? Now think about that in every different thing. It, so in a school that small, with the exception of the things at which they are, I mean, there's probably two or three things at Bard at which they genuinely do excel. I'm sure the, the drama program or the music program is formidable, but let's accept though they're special. Any non-specialty item at Bard is gonna be, it's wide open, it's totally accessible. You know, you wanna be in the physics club at Bard, you can be in the physics club at Bard, right? <laughs> and that is a massively underrated thing. So the, in other words, the, there is, there's a continuum here and uh, exclusivity is at one end and opportunity is at the other end. And people constantly are confusing these two things and thinking that in, in exclusivity and in, 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 in um, elite status is opportunity, false. Eventually, that's where the opportunities lie. They don't lie there when you're 16 or 17 and you, when what is, what is required of you is, is experimentation. If you want your 17-year-old to explore the world, send your 17-year-old to a place where the world can be explored. The world cannot be explored at a super elite university, right? It's impossible. I, had the, I talk about in David and Goliath the phenomenon of very, 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 very good science and math students going to elite colleges and dropping out at enormously high rates because they're in the 99th percentile and they're in a class full of people in the 99.9th percentile. And when you are in the 99th percentile and you're up against someone in the 99.99th percentile, you feel stupid, right? Even though you will never again in your life, unless you want to be an academic at MIT in physics, be surrounded by people that smart. Right? It's over after that. Then you go back to the real world and you're smart again. So why would you artificially put yourself in a situation where you feel so dumb that you stop doing the very thing that you went to school to do? That's just, that is bananas. That is like, and why this isn't a fact that people, like, when I, when I was in college, <clears throat> what I went out for the University of Toronto newspaper, and they could, wouldn't give me a job. It was too hard <laughs> to get in. They were they're brilliant people. So what did I do? I wrote for my pathetic joke of a, we had a residential college. We put out this kind of joke thing every couple of weeks. And it was insanely fun. It was like, I could do whatever I wanted. Nobody cared. We made up all kinds of crazies. I mean, in the end, I had a way better experience than I would have had if I had, was at the highly competitive newspaper. I've never forgotten that, right? By virtue of being this kind of lame, forgotten thing, I got to do more fun stuff and have a much better time than I would have at the proper newspaper. Um, you know, the, 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 this, this drives me, well, it clearly drives me crazy. Let me just say it drives me crazy. 